What do you get when you combine the overworld models from Final Fantasy VII with Double Dragon style action, an international kung fu star, and the guys that made Mario is missing? Well, for starters, you get a seriously chonky case of whiplash. <laughs> Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster is a single-player beat-em-up that was released in 2000 for the Sony PlayStation exclusively in America and Europe. Developed by Radical Entertainment and distributed by Midway, the game follows action star Jackie Chan on a mission to save his grandfather from what I'm assuming are gangsters of some kind after he's been kidnapped in New York City. The game features the voice and likeness of Jackie Chan, who was involved in its development and even performed his in-game character actions through the use of motion capture. And what results from this is a fun and charming game, albeit one that's also fairly generic and fairly flawed titular star aside. Even at the time of its release, Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster received some fairly middling reviews. Nobody went as far as to suggest that it was a bad game or anything, but you generally got the sense that it was looked at as a fairly adequate Lady or a PlayStation game and not much else, especially when put up against next-gen titles that were getting released alongside it. You gotta remember, we're talking about the year 2000 over here, the year that the PlayStation 2 came out and basically laid waste to any and all competition in its path. In fact, this game came out a few weeks after the PlayStation 2 launched in America, as well as six months after the Sega Dreamcast. So players and journalists alike were probably a little underwhelmed by this decidedly last-gen release. Even though I'm a lifelong Jackie Chan fan and actually own a ton of his movies on everything from VHS to VCD, DVD, and Blu-ray, I only picked this game up a couple of years ago due to being able to find it for relatively cheap as a loose copy. And while I enjoyed the game for how delightfully dated it is, I also kinda came to the conclusion that it was more fascinating than it was objectively good. There's just something objectively cool about playing as Jackie Chan in his own video game, even though he actually has a ton of them. Like, a lot more than you'd think he'd have. Anyway, instead of asking whether or not Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster holds up, I'm gonna take today's video to ask the question of whether or not Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster is worth playing to begin with. Because to be blunt, while Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster is a fine game, it's also a bit hard to get working on an emulator and has been steadily rising in price over the years. Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster takes place across 15 levels, which are divided into five sets of three stages. Each of these stages follow a particular theme that range from stuff like Chinatown or a waterfront to things like rooftops or a sewer. At the end of the last level for that particular location, you're then tasked with fighting a boss that is a significantly stronger opponent than the stock goons that you've been put up against at that point. All in all, it's a relatively standard gameplay loop that has you fighting hordes of enemies, performing simple platforming challenges, and solving the lightest of puzzles. You can make Jackie throw a punch by hitting the square button, and make him kick by pressing triangle or grapple an enemy by hitting circle. You can also jump, roll, and dodge to avoid getting hit by your opponents. That dodge is pretty awful though, and looks more like a calculated lean or dance move than it does something that would stop you from getting kicked in the face. It's a killer new dance move. For the most part, things feel relatively responsive and the combat is pretty fun despite being relatively simple. You can mix things up by trying different combinations of punches and kicks, by holding either square or triangle for stronger or stunning special moves, or by picking up nearby items to use in combat though. I especially like the fact that this is an option to begin with because while it's relatively standard fare for beat-em-ups, it's also totally compatible with how Jackie Chan fights in many of his movies. Although, it's far from being fully realized as you're restricted to kicking trash cans, picking up sticks, or using stuff like brooms to fight your opponents. I guess it's just hard not to wish for more as a Jackie Chan fan though. I would've loved to improvise using a bicycle like in Project A, or to kick stuff around like a refrigerator and pinball machine like in Rumble in the Bronx. 
Like, yeah, we definitely wouldn't have been able to get that dynamic with things in the game, seeing as it's for the PlayStation 1, but it would have been cool to see more fan service in the form of quick time events or in cutscenes or something. Oh, and those platforming challenges I mentioned? They're not great. In fact, I'd say they border on being completely broken and ruining the game for me. Given the fact that this is a beat-em-up, I wasn't really expecting much from these segments to begin with, but I still can't help but consider them to have been executed pretty terribly. Jumping just feels relatively stiff, as does grabbing onto ledges. It also doesn't help that the camera placement can lead to some pretty serious depth perception issues too, which will often lead to embarrassing deaths. And this is all compounded by the lack of analog control here, which locks you to moving in eight directions and prevents you from feeling completely in control of your movements. There are several moments in this game where you're expected to roll under obstacles, and messing this up can lead to you getting flung off the map and to your death. There are also several instances of the game switching perspectives on you and forcing you to avoid obstacles that are headed your way. Those platforming issues I mentioned earlier are especially bad in these segments though, particularly in the third sewer level when you're expected to balance dodging obstacles with fighting enemies and hopping between subway cars without falling to your death. If I'm being honest, they kinda remind me of Crash Bandicoot a bit, and make me wonder what alternate universe I'd need to visit for this game to be a straight up Crash clone as opposed to a platformer beat em up hybrid. Because as is, this game really feels like a project that the devs wanted to make a platformer with a simple combat system that was heavily constrained and dampened by using a game engine more suited to beat em ups. And yet, I still kinda just consider Jackie Chan Stuntmaster a fairly standard and mostly inoffensive game. That's not to say that it isn't a lot of fun though, just that it derives a lot of its entertainment value from the fact that it's a game starring Jackie Chan. For example, the game features a number of one-liners spoken by Chan that get played throughout the adventure. They're usually really cheesy and borderline cringy jokes, but are also a ton of fun to listen to because of the context of the game itself. It's just really funny to imagine that after watching his grandfather get kidnapped and have his life potentially get put in danger, the internationally renowned and beloved actor Jackie Chan decides to put matters into his own hands and try to rescue him all while spouting off corny one-liners. The game more or less plays just fine though, clunky platforming aside. The combat feels alright, and outside of getting repetitive, the level designs are mostly tolerable. I just wish that some more work was put into the camera placement and the way that the platforming feels, as in its current state, it feels really half-baked. So on to the visuals. How does this game look? Well… It's not pretty, but it'll do. As such a lady or a PlayStation 1 game, you'd probably think that it pushes the PlayStation to its limits in that it features visuals that would rank amongst the best that the console has ever seen. And you'd be wrong. Make no mistake, I think Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster looks great, just not graphically. The game's character models look flat out goofy and remind me of the Thumb Thumbs from the Spy Kids movies, as well as those chunky Final Fantasy VII character models. And the faces, I've gotta talk about the faces. They look flat out disturbing. It certainly doesn't look good, like at all, but there's a lot to love about this game's visuals. I've already touched on the character models and how hilariously chunky they are, but their charm also has a lot to do with their animations. Somewhat fascinatingly, Jackie Chan actually performed at least some of his video game counterpart's animations via motion capture. And while saying motion capture probably makes you imagine the sort of advanced, high-quality animation we got in The Lord of the Rings, or heck, even something like Jar Jar Binks in The Phantom Menace, the results in this game feel almost hilariously underutilized, likely due to the lack of weight in the animations or the improper scaling of the character models when compared to their performer. 
Level designs and environments are also similarly chonky, though they do look a lot better than their character models. I'm actually a huge fan of the dithered shadows and the game's color palette. I also like how several cutscenes actually offer a few easter eggs for Jackie Chan fans in the form of movie references. Overall, what's on display here is far from revolutionary or even notable, but it's charming and looks pretty great, even if the environments being rendered lean on being pretty generic. Which is, coincidentally, how I'd describe this game's music, too, which is all around solid, typical 90s action music and gets the job done. Some of the songs even approach being pretty good, and for whatever reason actually remind me of something that'd be in a Persona game, which I'm very happy about. Musically, the soundtrack incorporates elements of late 90s drum and bass, which isn't really a genre I'm all too familiar with, but I mean, I liked it when David Bowie gave it a shot, so, you know. Much like everything else in the game, the music is generic, but I don't know, it's enjoyable, so who cares. Stuntmaster also features voice acting, which I had mentioned earlier. It's a solid touch for the most part, but can overstay its welcome due to Jackie not having enough dialogue to work with. Still, it's a nice touch and it reminds me of a simpler time in gaming, when celebrities could get a proper licensed console game based off their name alone. Also, listening to Jackie Chan spout off one-liners is just adorable. So is Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster worth playing? Nah, not really. The game is a mostly by-the-numbers ride that doesn't do anything all that well and doesn't have anything going for it outside of its Jackie Chan license. While I did have a good time with the game and did have fun playing through it, I just don't think the game is worth seeking out. In an alternate universe, I may have ended up recommending this game had the platforming and controls been just a bit tighter, but as it stands, it's just a bit too frustrating for me to overlook especially because of how much platforming you're expected to do here. And once you add in the fact that this game is currently going for $35 loose and for $75 with a jewel case, I just can't justify trying to get a copy of it. As for emulation, if you can get an ISO of this game working, more power to ya. I actually ended up buying my loose copy of this game several years ago because I couldn't get it working on several PlayStation emulators, and I only just purchased the reproduction case for it because, I don't know, well, I, I wanted one. At the end of the day, though, Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster is fine. It's inoffensive and fun, but you can more or less get the full experience by watching a Let's Play or some gameplay online. If you find yourself hankering for some Jackie Chan action, you're probably better off playing one of his other games or just booting up any other beat-em-up while you watch Rumble in the Bronx or Police Story. And with that said and done, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and that if you decide to check out Jackie Chan Stuntmaster anyway, you have a good time doing so. On top of that, if you have recommendations for a future video on this channel, please just feel free to leave a comment telling me about the game a bit, or to reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram. You can find me on those social media platforms by following the link in the description. So yeah. Bye.